Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron Solomon, and welcome back to another episode of Brief Legal Tips. Today, we have with us Abe Tran. Abe, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Aaron. So, Abe, we're going to address a very important question today. I'd like to know what advice you would give people who've been injured and need a lawyer, yet for whom English is not their first language. Sure, Aaron. Great question. Um, you know, I, I think it's important that anyone who is injured obtain representation and everyone deserves the best representation they can get. Uh, unfortunately, it can be very difficult for an attorney, even the best attorney, to work with a client if they don't speak the same language. Uh, for that reason, I think to the extent a person can, they should seek out an attorney who does speak their language or has someone at that office who does speak their language. Um, myself, I speak Vietnamese fluently in addition to English. Uh, actually, it probably was my first language, although I'm, I'm more fluent now in English, but I am fluent in both. And I found that one of the advantages of being able to speak Vietnamese to my Vietnamese clients is that I can interact with them uh, more easily in a way that's more convenient for them. Um, there are less things that are lost in translation. And once we move to later processes in uh, later stages in the litigation, the process proceeds more smoothly because I don't have to worry that a translator is properly interpreting what I say or properly inter interpreting what the client says to me. Um, at deposition or at trial, there are advantages because sometimes you run into issues where you don't know for sure if the translator is interpreting things exactly right or certain nuances are lost in translation. And I'm able to pick up on that and follow up on that in a way that may otherwise be lost if you are relying entirely on the translator. And Abe, as you point out, no one should underestimate the trust factor and how important that is for people. Because yes, it's one thing for someone to be speaking the same language as their lawyer. But because finding a lawyer when you need one can be a very scary thing for people, being able to communicate with someone who understands you but understands your culture and where you're coming from is certainly a huge advantage as well, yes? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I've discovered uh, working with people who do not speak English or do not speak English very well is that they're often also afraid of the legal system just because it can appear so intimidating and so daunting and they're not used to what they might have to face in it even less than the average person um, and whether that's a matter of culture or um, socioeconomics or something else uh, the fact that the attorney can speak the same language and relate to them on a cultural level uh, does certainly help make them more comfortable. And by virtue of being more comfortable, they're able to express themselves better, explain their position better, and ultimately present their case in the best way because they're not dealing with multiple obstacles. They're dealing with just the normal obstacles that all clients have to deal with when they have a, a claim or they're making a claim um, for personal injuries. Abe, I really want to thank you for joining us today because I think that the tips that you've given are extremely valuable and I hope that lawyers take this into consideration and people also feel increasingly comfortable finding a lawyer who speaks their first language or second language as it may be uh, and can help them achieve their goal as you do. So again, Abe, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Aaron.